back to three Q's and you. Well, in this case, you. Uh, today, I'm your host, Hank Rawls. I hit the microphone there. It's gonna, peak, it's gonna make it weird. I'm sorry about that. Uh, today, we have a very special guest. His name is Dr. David Chambers. He's with the Department of Biology here. Uh, tell us a little oh. bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, kind of new here, although my family is from the area. I just kind of moved here with my wife about uh, a couple of years ago and I've been loving my time at Boise State ever since. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, we also have some graphics about some of the trips that you've been on. Oh, yeah. Um, would you wanna just give us a brief overview of some of them? Uh, yeah, so kind of in my time, I've been fortunate enough to um, kind of travel various parts around the world uh, with students. Oh, yeah, so this is some whale shark research uh, off the coast of the Yucatan. Uh, I got to take a couple students down there and had some fun swimming with them and trying to tag them and stuff like that. Oh, that yeah. sounds really, how do you go about tagging one? Swim quickly. Ah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> jump, so this is, um, oh, where's that, Galapagos Islands. Oh. So I've been fortunate enough to go down there several times, uh, taking students each time, you know, 15, 20 students a clip and spend three, four weeks down there just kind of island hopping around and kind of doing that immersive experience while they get some college credit for that. Okay. And how about oh, this one? Look at that. That's an old <laughs> one. Um, doing some field ecology work with some different turtles. That was a snapping turtle. That's one of the giant Galapagos uh, tortoises that I was able to kind of go and hang out with for a while. Okay. Do you yeah. think? Uh, do you think you could take one in a fight, though? Oh God, no. How many? No, they're massive. You think so? No, they're massive. Don't they have like just a small neck, though? Don't they? No, no. It's actually pretty big. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I could I could take them if it, if speed was the game, but size there's no way. Ah, uh, okay. No. You know, figured we had to analyze. You know where your confidence level was. Oh no, with them, in fairly to low, pretty low. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, I'll, I'll go over a little bit about how this game goes. Okay. Uh, so we have three questions or three categories, I guess I should say. Each one has three questions. You get to choose which one of the questions you want to answer. Okay. We might have a fourth question. All right, let's do that's, it. That's for you to decide. <laughs> All right, so let's start off with our college questions. First off, what is something that you regret doing in college? That I regret this. doing? Oh, you get to hear all of these bad boys. <clears throat> let's see. How um, did you, oh, there are two more. And oh, then you choose crap. which one of these three you want to answer. Let's do it. All right, the next one is, how did you end up in such an offbeat, unconventional, and cool career? All right. And the third one? is one thing in college that changed your life for the better. Which one of these is the illustrious, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Dr. Chambers, gonna answer? Let's do number three. Number three, yeah. okay. Getting involved with faculty research as soon as I could. Okay. So even though it was just getting my foot in the door, washing dishes, it got me into a lab talking with people, networking, um, making friends and talking to professors that eventually kind of led to actual research once I was proven as a dishwasher, I guess. <laughs> and it just opened the door for here's awards, here's master's degree opportunities, PhD opportunities. And it was just kind of a whim. I saw a flyer in a hallway looking for a dishwasher in a lab <laughs> and I thought I, I, I could do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Seems pretty, it seems pretty, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for here. It was life changing. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Your confidence level yeah, had to be through the roof was, to be like, I think I can wash those dishes. I had no yeah. idea, oh, I knew I could, yes. I had it. Yeah, um, I just didn't know really what I was doing. I was kind of just putzing around. I knew I was a bio major, but okay. it really kind of got me into the research and wanting to teach sector. Would you also say that uh, like, I guess, connections and building relationships with people is a big part of becoming a scientist? Oh yeah, well. it might even be more important than the content itself. Just establishing that network, um, working with people, collaborating with others, even though you might not be top with content, it's just having that type of uh, uh, collegiality that can take you a lot of places. Okay. Yeah. All right, well now we've got some questions about your professional career. Okay. If you were going to say, Hank, did you spell professional correctly on this card, I'd have to say no. Uh, so also for that last one, blue was the team that won. Oh. There are three teams in this case, you don't know them, 
I vaguely know them, <laughs> but blue is the winner so far. All so right. we'll see if they can keep this streak going. All right, first question. While being a professor at BSU, what is something that puts a smile on your face daily? Second question, has there ever been a discovery that has given you more of a personal satisfaction? Or third, what is the coolest animal that you've gotten to encounter due to your career? Oh boy, that's the number three. You'd wanna do number yeah, three? Yeah, number three. All right, mark that down, white team. <clears throat> coolest animal. Um, I'd have to say the penguins on the equator in the Galapagos. And I'm a herpetologist. I love all things amphibians and reptiles. Okay. But to see a, a penguin on the equator it was just kind of surreal for me. I'm feeling a little betrayed here, <laughs> just a tiny bit. All right, I Western diamondback rattlesnake. I invite you yeah. on this show as a herpetologist, <laughs> and you tell me yep. a penguin? A penguin. I'm sorry. Okay. Change of answer. Cut it. Anaconda, oh, oh, okay. Amazon. Yeah. Okay. What about the penguins though? Why were they cool? Oh, I've just always loved penguins. It, it goes back to my roots from Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm a penguins fan for NHL stuff. Uh, and I've just <laughs> always been fascinated with penguins. I love how they waddle and have all these colonies. So just seeing them kind of bopping out of the water that's tropical was just weird. Yeah, that sounds weird. I feel like I yeah. still can't picture it in my mind. Yeah, yeah, it's very surreal. How do they... Maybe this is a weird question. How do they survive? I feel like, are penguins very docile? Because in my mind, they definitely are. No, they were, well, yeah. Almost they, a dodo. They yeah, they fairly, they were, they were pretty docile. They don't really get too much traffic down there, so they don't know any better to be aggressive or anything like okay. that. Okay, okay. You, you grab one? This is off the record. No, we are not allowed to touch the animals. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, then hypothetically. If I could, I might have like a dozen times or so. Okay, yeah. okay. So there may or may not be a photo of me hugging one, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, this is hypothetical, I, okay? Could have been a dream. This is hypothetical, just like yeah. the way, hypothetically, the producer told me that he just hates my guts. I don't, <laughs> right. I don't know why he would <laughs> not, he, he didn't say that, he didn't say that for no. sure. Hypothetically, you might not graduate. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so I think our <laughs> teacher or something leaned over in my ear and he said, hey, don't mess this up. Uh, but I believe it. Yeah, you shouldn't, it was hypothetical. <laughs> All right, are you ready for our wild card question? Oh, let's do it. We got three more of these bad boys. We have, have you ever been screwed out of a lot of money? And if so, how? Number two, favorite Spider-Man movie and why? Ooh. Yeah. Or three, of all of the reptiles and amphibians, what would you like to reincarnate yourself into in your next life? Oh my. If you say a penguin, I, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one to do. Oh. Let's do the Spider-Man one. You wanna do the Spider-Man yeah, one? Yeah, let's do the Spider-Man one. Oh, okay. Oh, the best one and why. You know, I was a big fan of this last one, No Way Home. No Way Home? Still I haven't spent, seen it. I'm about to leave. <laughs> I used, it comes out on digital on the 22nd. Um, no, I just loved it. It was kind of like my childhood reimagined on the big screen, seeing all three Spider-Men, each I like in a different way. So I love Tobey Maguire's um, uh, Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. I love Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, and Holland is kind of like in the middle of both, right? Like the, Best the Goldilocks phenomenon. Yeah. yeah, okay. And seeing them all kind of interact, it was just a really cool experience for me. So I love doing that. I get that, yeah. I get that. Which one would you say is probably the best Spider-Man just objectively? Garfield. Definitely? Yeah. You said that with no I, hesitation I, yeah, right there. No, I love his costume, especially in the second movie of his. Absolutely loved it. And I just kind of love the quirkiness that he has. He has that charisma when he puts that mask on that Spider-Man needs to have. I do get that. Yeah. What, uh, who would you say had the best, uh, I guess this is gonna branch into two different questions right here. Who would you say out of the three had the best villains? And who would you say is the best villain? Oh. In cinema. Sadly, I'd have to say probably not Holland, his villains up until this last movie, which weren't even really his, weren't the best. It was almost like a spider boy thing. Um, Garfield, the, I, the writing wasn't good enough, so I'm gonna have to go with Tobey Maguire had the best villains, probably Doc Ock. Oh, you'd say Doc Ock's too. the best? Yeah. I, I always would run around and try to pretend to be Doc Ock. Nice. I never, it never looked good. <laughs> all right, now we do have one more question. Oh, all right. There's Let's four cues in you now. I held up three fingers at first, but you get it. Uh, all right, this forced one. 
which Ninja Turtle would you say is just the best overall? And then describe your reasoning. Raphael. Raphael? Yeah. Put it up, put it up, <laughs> get it up there. <clears throat> Boom, look at that. I definitely thought you weren't gonna yep. say this one and I was just gonna put this up regardless of whichever <laughs> one. No, he is by far the best. What's your reasoning on this one? He wears his emotion on his sleeve. He's passionate. He knows he's not a leader and doesn't even try to embrace that. He just has one of those like hidden good hearts where he will help you out but then take your candy in the end. It's, he's almost like the equivalent of like the black suit Spider-Man. In the end, he'll do the right thing, <laughs> but he's gonna kind of rub it in your face a little bit. Okay, so yeah. Raphael's the black suit Spider-Man of the, the Ninja Turtles. Clearly, yeah. Yeah, okay. Did you only watch, uh, what, type of, what type of movies did you watch about him though? Like, I guess, what form of media did you consume involving the, the Ninja Turtles? <clears throat> oh, everything. So I grew up with the cartoon first and foremost. Okay. Um, and then as the movies tr kind of just evolved throughout, some have been okay, some have sucked pretty bad. Mm, um, I get you. Meeting Kevin Eastman at several Comic-Cons and having him like sketch right in front of me and I have it framed in my room at home. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, yeah. Well, put the graphic up one more time, yeah, please. 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 Oh. No? I guess, uh, well, they hate me. No, they do. This has been Three Cues in You with our illustrious guest, Dr. David Chambers. Thank you very much oh, for coming you. out here. I really appreciate it. And this has been Three Cues in You. I've been your host, Hank Rawls. Join us next time for a new host, a new guest, a new crew. Yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see you next time.